Rebel Nation, are you ready? It's time for the Cannon Motors of Mississippi Rebel Yell Hotline. He gets the blocks he needs. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Straight in the middle. It's a first down and more. See you later. It's going to be a touchdown for Judkins. Right up the middle, David. Big gaping hole opened up, and Judkins just burst through there. Gary Darby, Chuck Roundsville, Yancey Porter, and Gordon Ford bring you the latest on everything going on with Ole Miss Athletics. Gets control and the dunk. Oh, my. Don't sit on the sidelines. Be part of the show. Text in your questions or comments at 662-426-1093. That's 662-426-1093. 1093. I guess you don't have to, but you need to. He hits one high and deep left field. Kane shading the eyes at the track, and it is gone. Let's get to it. Here's your host, Gary Darby. Well, a happy Labor Day, everyone, and welcome to the Cannon Motors of Mississippi Rebel Yell Hotline. Gary, Chuck Yancey, and with a 73 7, Ole Miss beats. Mercer, Tulane got a win 37-17, so we'll talk a little bit about all of that in today's program. Let me tell you what we have coming up. In the next segment, we'll discuss the uh, Tulane team as uh, we will get from their sidelines. The sideline reporter on the Tulane Green Wave Network, Maddie Hudak, is going to join us. She's got the job there, does a little work with the Saints as well, so we'll talk with Maddie coming up here in the next segment. we got your text messages at 662-426-1093. A look at injuries. Harry Harrison joins us at 630, and you know the rest of the world. So you can get those text messages in. I can see a bunch of them now as I start to uh, do all the clicking and get ready to uh, get some of those. We'll bring in the real talent of the show. Here's Chuck. Here's Yancey. Who dat? <laughs> who Dak? Who Dak? Isn't, isn't that great? Isn't that great? Perfect. I love, Perfect. I love it. I wonder if he covers the Saints too. <laughs> she, she, she does some Saints work. So yeah. It's, oh, uh, it's a she. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a she. Uh, Marty. Maddie. Maddie. M a d d y. Okay. Who Dak? So we can, I love it. Almost just like, who dat? <laughs> That's why I said that. <laughs> First South Farm Credit, let's talk about them. 100 years of experience supporting rural communities and agriculture, ready to guide you through the financial journey at First South Farm Credit. Okay. I, I, saw, I saw you in the booth, but really didn't mention it, didn't see you. Thoughts after the quarterback run 75 yards on play one from Mercer. What were you thinking? Good play. I mean, I listen. You can look out on that field and tell that one will be a game. That's right. It, yeah. it just wasn't. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I'm not. I was not concerned with the missed assignment or missed assignments. Plural. I was just more concerned about the defense's ability to catch the quarterback. It seems like he was separating from the defense, and that team speed just kind of gave me an eerie feeling. But they played great defense the rest of the game. I think they got personnel, as we'll talk about the five thoughts, to rectify that problem. But it did expose, I think, what uh, some concerns we had going into game one in my eyes. Next thing, did either of you see Chris Collins? No. Former receiver, did you no. see him? He I came. Wish I had. He came back. He was in our Letterman's Lounge. He's been working on an oil rig for 20-some-odd years. Dude is jacked. Really? <laughs> Let me tell you, he is big. He's a big guy. And we, we had it, you know, in the pregame show, and I, I know he was down on the field. It, it's amazing to me that he still is number one in touchdowns caught by a receiver in Ole Miss history. He's in the top three in receiving yards and in receptions. Think about all the guys that have come through. That's one of the best ones to do it in an Ole well, Miss. He had a pretty good quarterback. He too. did. He, we we <laughs> joked. He's a great player. We he joked really that he made Eli right, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, along the yeah, way. Yeah. Uh, but that was a good uh, receiving room then, which yeah. is kind of where I'm going right now. And we'll quickly get to your thoughts. What SB about the receiver? Bill Flowers. Yeah, that's, that's right. I used to call those kids back when they were in high school, including Chris. That's, that's right. how old I'm getting now. <laughs> now to the receiving core. What we saw at least with Watkins and Harris and Heath as a tight end. Um, I, I thought we saw some good things from the receivers on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, again, Mercer. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I, I hate to keep bringing that up, but listen, we had, this that was not even a test. I mean, I, I'm sorry, it just wasn't. We know, yeah. how, we know how those have gone, though, in the past. It was good to see that they took yeah. care of the business. Oh, like absolutely. They. I think this group as a whole is more dynamic than last year's, without question in my eyes, deeper. Let's get to those five thoughts. 
Yancey. They're yep. brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Steve Grantham has nine operating them in the states of Mississippi and Tennessee. Give us those thoughts. First thought, I thought Jackson Dart made the jump from year one to year two as hoped. Very decisive and accurate with the ball, obviously starting off 11 for 11. He looks very comfortable now in Lane's offense. Thought number two, Trey Harris's ability to stick his foot in the ground along with his build and ability to bounce off of contact reminds me of someone else who played for Ole Miss. His name is A.J. Brown. No, I'm not saying Harris is as good as A.J. Brown, but even a poor man's A.J. Brown is pretty darn good. Thought number three, I thought the pass pro, uh, pro blocking by the offensive line was much better against Mercer. Yes, it's just Mercer, but we saw the problems arise last season against weaker competition as well. Keep your fingers crossed. Thought number four, Santaron Perkins doesn't need to leave the field, in my opinion, unless he's winded or hurt. He's the best de- defender for Ole Miss, along with Xavier Harris and J.J. Piggies. Thought number five. The lack of overall speed on defense is still my biggest concern going forward. All is not lost, though. I think there are some personnel that can help rectify this issue with players like Santaron Perkins, Xavier Harris, Jamon Gordon, Kyrie Coleman, uh, T.J. Young, and Deshaun Gotti. The pieces are there. Now it's just time to put them together. And so for our text message line from the 662, we've got them from all different area codes. The biggest concern moving forward, Yancey answered his there at the end we'll come back we'll take a look into the upcoming saturday maddie will join us on the other side sideline reporter from the Tulane green wave network coming up with us next When you think car, we want you to think Canon. Whether you're in the market for gas, hybrid, or electric vehicles, our team has got you covered. We're invested in your future and in seeing that you have the experience you deserve, even after you get your car. Pre-order or bring home a new Chevrolet Silverado or a Chevrolet pre-owned vehicle from Canon Chevrolet of Oxford today. And remember, when the smoke clears, nobody beats a Canon deal. Nobody. Chevrolet, find your road. What does the farm mean to you? Maybe it's a piece of land for production, crops, or cattle. Or maybe the farm is just a place you can go to relax or enjoy the outdoors. Whatever the farm means to you, First South Farm Credit can help you finance or refinance that perfect piece of land. We've been financing farms and land since 1916 with competitive rates and flexible terms. For more information, go to FirstSouthLand.com. Equal housing lender. Cannon Cleary McGraw is ranked Oxford's number one real estate firm because of fans like you. The agents of Cannon Cleary McGraw are true experts in their field, and it shows with hundreds of five star reviews and unwavering commitment to their clients. Cannon Cleary McGraw experts specialize in game day condos, seasonal townhomes, and high end single family homes. If you are on the sidelines and ready to get in the game, give a Cannon Cleary McGraw agent a call today at 662 371 1000. Tilt the odds in your favor of getting what you want with the best service in Oxford at Cannon Cleary McGraw real estate. If you're in the market for a fine piece of jewelry, there's only one name to know. Van Atkins. Serving its customers since 1939, Van Atkins has been voted the best estate jeweler in Mississippi multiple times. With great locations to serve you in historic downtown New Albany and on the square in Oxford, Van Atkins is the place to go. Whether it's a piece for yourself or for that special someone, Van Atkins is the easy decision. And like Chuck always says, you know she's worth it. Oxford Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Board Certified Surgeons are specially trained for you and your family. From dad's knee replacement to your son's football injury. Leaders in orthopedic care. Oxford Orthopedic can treat any of your orthopedic needs close to home. Locations in Oxford, Batesville, Grenada, Hernando, Cleveland, Calhoun City, and Pontotoc. Official orthopedic team physicians for Ole Miss Athletics. To make an appointment, call 662-513-2000 or visit OxfordOrtho.org. 
Campbell Clinic Orthopedics, a national and international leader in musculoskeletal care, is opening a full-service clinic in Oxford on June 12th, offering a full spectrum of orthopedic care, including sports medicine, pediatrics, hip and knee, spine, shoulder and elbow, foot and ankle, hand and wrist, as well as cast and x-ray services, and a physical therapy department. Schedule online now at www.campbellclinicoxford.com. We also offer a convenient weekly walk-in clinic Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. Campbell Clinic Oxford, located at 2608 South Lamar Boulevard, across from the cottages at Hooper Hollow. You're listening to the Rebel Yell Hotline, presented by Cannon Motors. Second half of the program will bring in from the Omus Radio Network, Harry Harrison. He'll talk with us about the Mercer game and thoughts leading into what will happen Saturday when the Rebels go to New Orleans. I'm Gary Chuck with me, Yancey as well. And we're going to go to the host of Before the Whistle, also the sideline reporter for Green Wave Football. Maddie Hudak is with us. Maddie, how are you? I'm doing well. My voice is still a little bit recovering from Saturday night's matchup. That's okay. We appreciate you giving us a little bit of your Labor Day time. What else do you do besides the things I just mentioned? Uh, I think that pretty much covered it. Like you said, the Before the Whistle podcast, Tulane Sideline Reporter. Try to cover the Saints when I have time, but Tulane has definitely taken up uh, quite a bit of my attention this season. Well, Maddie, how, how much of the Cotton Bowl team is back? We don't know a lot about Tulane. What's, what's that roster look like? Sure, there's uh, quite a bit of turnover both on the coaching staff and the players from the Cotton Bowl. I mean, you have really the most important player coming back at quarterback and Michael Pratt. That's obvious, but you have four of the five returning starters on the offensive line. The only player they had to replace this offseason was Joey Claybrook at left tackle. They brought in Cameron Wire, transfer over from LSU. Uh, they lost you know, there were tight ends that helped out quite a bit in the blocking game for Tajay Spears, which is kind of that star player on offense that I think they're still trying to kind of figure out how they're going to approach that. And it's probably going to be by committee against you guys. And then on defense, uh, we have two new starting linebackers starting. Uh, they call it anchor now. It's that slot nickel roll, uh, new starters at safety as well. And, and I'd say probably the biggest thing that they have going into that matchup is definitely more depth on the trenches than they did when they met in the 2021 season on defense. That's not a bad returning for, for this day and age of the transfer portal, though. That's that's quite a few returning, actually. It's a good point, and it's really the only players that we lost are players that graduated and went on you know, to go into the NFL draft. Uh, they really didn't lose anyone to the transfer portal at all and, and did get some key transfers in, uh, especially at that slot role, Cam Pettis blow over from the Louisiana Raging Cajuns kind of heading into this season. They had brought over Andre Sam, a transfer from Marshall, and then he ended up going over to LSU. And so trying to solve that through the transfer portal, they definitely have used the transfer portal more to their advantage, but definitely built a culture here at Tulane that is drawing guys in the transfer portal, as well as Tyler Grubbs at linebacker. Uh, they got him from over at Lafayette as well. And those are really filling key roles in, especially at the linebacking corp, Dorian Williams and Nick Anderson played pretty much every snap at linebacker and led the team in tackles through the season and almost every week. So that's been a big you know position group that's had to step up. Well, talk to us about uh, Michael Pratt's MO. What, what do we need? What are we going to be looking at when we, when we face him? Well, he showed that he could do a lot more in the air than I think you kind of saw them lean into a little more at the end of last season. But uh, I, I will say that Tulane is very depending on how they match up with the opponent, and we'll kind of get more of that insight from Willie Fritz tomorrow. But, you know, he's really always playing at the expense of the team and not trying to kind of just pad up his stat line. But the anticipation and timing with which he was throwing, I mean, he had 295 yards in the air on just, 14 uh, passes and four touchdowns. He takes care of the football. He doesn't have that many interceptions. He gets zero in the opener and doesn't have a fumbling issue as well. Um, and he's mobile when he wants to be, but tries to kind of not rely on that until it's relatively necessary. But he'll kind of gas you up the middle with straight line speed. He's not, you know, the most maneuvering in the backfield, but he will definitely take off and you know, eat up a decent amount of yardage on the ground. Matty, what's the excitement down there in New Orleans having an SEC town? team coming into town, having Lane Kiffin's offense coming into town. Just talk about the excitement down there for this matchup. Sure, yeah. It's probably the most important home game at Tulane, um, one probably being that Oklahoma game in 2021 that ultimately got ended up moving to Norman Stadium. And so, yeah, having that attention down at Tulane and, again, just kind of it's that last 
stop on what went wrong in the 2021 season, and that was ultimately culminating in 27 days of being evacuated from Hurricane Ida and just not being up in strength and conditioning and, and nutrition at that, and then going over to play, you know, an SEC side school and really have that hostile environment. And it'll be interesting to kind of see how the two lane crowd shows up. That was the first game that sold out on the uh, season and single game tickets, and it made sense, especially because there are a lot of Ole Miss fans here as well. But what's kind of changed here is that Tulane is its own draw now, and you saw a lot of casual fans at the game on Saturday that, you know, were wearing Saints gear and stuff. And that's really something that we've never seen before at Tulane. So it's definitely going to be a record attendance, uh, unfortunately, at the hottest point of the day at 2.30 p.m. <laughs> Matty, I don't know if it's been discussed much there, but how does Tulane plan to attack Ole Miss offensively and defensively? What did they see the holes on Ole Miss right now? Again, that's something I, I probably will find out tomorrow because it was Labor Day. We had much more of a delayed practice. But, I mean, you guys had a quarterback competition kind of going on all throughout the off season, and so that's kind of difficult in order to pull off film study. But I think at least of an offensive identity for Tulane, they're going to really stick with that. It'll probably, you know, the play calling will be altered a little bit depending on the opponent. But Willie Fritz is a 50-50 a philosophy of run pass, and I think that really – it is a little more apparent in this new age of the clock that doesn't stop running, um, which unfortunately didn't really shorten the actual broadcast of games, as we've all seen. But when you're a team that can kind of just run the clock out uh, on the ground, I know that's what Tulane wants to do, but they definitely have a speedier group of receivers than they did last year. And so I, I you know, I'm still kind of doing my uh, study on Ole Miss as well, but Depending on the speed of your secondary, I'd say that's really something that Tulane has upped their game in this year and really have you know three receivers out there at a time that have track speed. Is this a, a, going to be a tempo offense that Ole Miss is going to be facing, or you guys huddle, or what? They definitely do both. Uh, I mean, you saw them really perform in that two-minute drill uh, during the Cotton Bowl, but it, it kind of is depending on the drive, depending on the situation, uh, depending on what – they're wanting to do at that point in the game. I, I Like I said, there are definitely some quarters where it's more of a slog and then they'll pick it up if they need to. But I just think, yeah, it's going to be a pretty balanced game. Like I said, I don't know exactly how they're planning on attacking it yet, but all I know is they'll definitely be firing on all cylinders. I mean, this is definitely the game that was the most anticipated heading into this week. And, you know, both teams pulling off that week one win, it really would do a lot for Tulane season in order to have that kind of upset against the SEC school on the schedule. Defensive style. Talk to us a little bit about what Coach Fritz likes to do defensively. Sure. Well, we have a new defensive coordinator in Shieldwood, and it's just a very completely different picture than what you saw last season under Chris Hampton, where he was very bend, don't break, and, and primarily in that zone defense and just kind of letting teams not make just not making giant mistakes and letting those short yardage plays but not allowing big plays. This year the defense is definitely trying to be – playmakers and it's the opposite of bend don't break uh they played a lot all around with defensive fronts and I, i'd say that their interior defensive line has improved a lot and that comes with having guys back that were injured last year and guys like adonis Freelu. but i just think that shieldwood's approach to this defense has been a, a very aggressive style uh one that brings pressure down from the secondary and very man coverage style defense a lot more uh, tight coverage than what we saw from those players last year. And again, it, it's primarily a completely different group of secondary players that certainly had their test uh, out in week one. You know, there was a little bit of time where they were holding a little bit and just kind of allowed a wide open play in coverage, but had a really good show of mental toughness then turning the ball over on downs the following series and then getting an interception in that next game. But that defense had five turnovers. Shieldwood at 27 with Troy last year, which was eighth in the FBS. And it's just immediately showing that these guys really are trying to anticipate and jump those routes to make those interceptions. Maddie, great stuff. Thank you so much for Thank your you, time Maddie. on Labor Day. Um, we look forward to seeing you down there. Awesome. Really looking forward to this weekend. Thanks, guys. Thanks again, Maddie. I hope the concessionaires have plenty of liquid refreshments uh, yeah. for both sides well, on a hot day in the middle of a Saturday coming up. Yeah, it was interesting when I asked her about the holes, and she said she really hadn't studied old Mrs. Holes yet, but she made an interesting point about them having three receivers that have track speed, and that's exactly what I think Ole Miss needs to face to really get that secondary uh, puzzle solved, and uh, I think that really stood out to me. It's going to be an interesting match up there. Great stuff, Matty Hudak. By the way, this portion of the program was brought to you by Gateway Tire. They've been serving us for quite some time now. 1929, 54 locations, 
six different states. Gateway Tire goes the distance for you. Top 25 matchup. Neither team did anything to hurt that. We'll see what the official polls come out and say tomorrow. Next up, text messages at 662-426-1093. The injury report and more on tonight's Cannon Motors Mississippi Rebel Yell Hotline. Imagine years of hard work and saving, and now you're worried about outliving your retirement savings. Paxton Farise and the Farise Group have over 20 years and a process working toward success, not stress, after retirement. To know how you can truly enjoy a level of comfort and security, talk to the Farise Group. Retirement should be stress-free, not stressful. The Farise Group, farisegroup.com, offices in Oxford and Jackson. The Farise Group, your partner in retirement. Registered representatives offer securities through Security America, Inc., member FINRA, SIPC. The Farise Group, LLC, and Securities America companies are separate entities. Big Delta Power Sports on Cracker Barrel Drive in Batesville celebrates 20 years in business this year. Check out the great selection now of major brands like Honda, Polaris, Can-Am, Yamaha, and Kawasaki. Featuring the most fun off the road and on the road. Motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides. Zero-turn mowers. Plus, you'll find generators by Honda and Polaris. And Big Delta is your steel power equipment dealer. Celebrating 20 years in business, whether it's work or play. Big Delta Power Sports in Batesville. Outback Steakhouse knows steak. Even better, the grills are always hot and ready for your favorites. There's nothing better than pairing a bold steak with a bloomin' onion and one of our signature cocktails. Drop in for a great lunch or dinner anytime for awesome food and a bloomin' good time. Either way, Outback has your back. Visit their locations in Tupelo, Hattiesburg, Meridian, South Haven, Diabraville, and Floyd, Mississippi. Also serving Jackson and Cordova, Tennessee. Outback Steakhouse. House cleaning is just one of those things you gotta do. But life is busy, and the great folks at Brittany's Cleaning Services understand that and are here to help. They provide professional cleaning services for residential, commercial, and rental properties. Reliable, honest, experienced cleaners with affordable pricing. Servicing Olive Branch, Tupelo, Water Valley, Bruce, Holly Springs, Pontotoc, Oxford, Baylor, New Albany, South Haven, Senatobia, and Batesville. Call for more information at 662-202-8868 and follow them on social media. That's Brittany's Cleaning Services, LLC. Hey, Rebel fans, want to be more involved with Ole Miss? Well, join the Grove Collective, the exclusive Ole Miss NIL program. With the new name, image, and likeness law, Rebel fans now have the opportunities to support and elevate Ole Miss student-athletes. And the Grove Collective has created a unified portal to amplify that support. As part of the Grove Collective, your support opens access to special events, fan experiences, merchandise, and marketing opportunities with student-athletes. To find out more and to become part of the Grove Collective NIL program, visit thegrovecollective.com. Hotty toddy and go Rebs. More of the Rebel Yell Hotline, presented by Cannon Motors, coming up next. Text message time and more as we continue, and Harry Harrison comes up. Great stuff from Maddie along the way. So let's get into what we had uh, in the five things. Yancey gave his concerns, but we have that question again, much like last week after watching game one. Chuck, concerns? Well, it's not really a concern, but I'm anxious to see how good the first team is. Because I know the second team is not that big a drop-off, but it's kind of like that old saying about quarterbacks. You know, if you don't have a a starting quarterback, you don't have a quarterback. And I'm just anxious to see if the first team is is good enough to stand up against the brutes of the SEC. And if they are, we got one heck of a team, fellas. I mean, we've got a real team because the second team is not a big drop-off. I like the versatility. You can go big, you can go quick on defense with a lot of those groupings, right, at linebacker. You mm-hmm. go Kyrie Coleman or Perkins there or put in Batiste and Monty. Uh, you got different mix and matchups that you can do for particular teams in the SEC, and that's what I like about it. Yeah, I agree. I agree, but I'm just anxious to see how good the front line is against a really good opponent. Me too. Boy, Xavion Harris played his rear end off, didn't he? Xavion Harris – is a good football player. The only thing that bothers me about him is sometimes I think he plays a little too high. Sure. And and some of these, like I say, these SEC linemen will get underneath those pads and it's lights out then. So he's got to learn to play lower. But he's six eight. It's hard, it's <laughs> three thirty five. Yeah. Six eight to to play lower. Yeah. Well, he's but, down to three oh five. Is he? And I think that's helped him. Uh, his explosion off the ball and his quickness. And he looked quick. He did. Mm. And, and I think that's helped him. 
And he told me he wants to put on about 10 to 15 pounds, but he wants to put on muscle instead of what he lost, which was body fat. And if he does that, I mean, and he learns to play a little bit lower and behind his pads a little bit better, you're talking about a guy that could be real special, no real doubt. special. Back to the text message line where this one comes from the, the 901. I'll try not to sound petty here. Should there be any concern as to how long we allowed Mercer's possession time to be? I know it was one-sided uh, and they punted turnovers, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to shorten this down. It worries me that there weren't that many three and outs according to that. We talked about the time of possession. you got to remember, like the quarterback ran 75 yards in 12 seconds. The other 34-plus minutes – I mean, they got across the 50 a couple of times. I think that, I mean, obviously, I think it's what they had to do, right? Keep the ball as much as possible. And still Ole Miss scored 73. Sounds like Tulane's going to try that, too. You know, yeah. with Maddie, they you know, they kind of they, they mix and match what they want to do, and obviously they're going to want to hold on to the ball. I'm never concerned about their 20 to our 40. I, I just don't get concerned about that. I don't care if they keep it all day from their 20 to our 40, but – you know, when they get down in the red zone, which they didn't, except one time when he went 75 yards, that's when you have to worry. Sure. Like last night, watched all, every second of the Florida State LSU game. LSU's first five, six uh-huh. possessions, they were in the, the red zone and yeah. just didn't yeah. score. Yeah. yeah. Just didn't score. Like that is the something they lost the game. I can too. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And I can guarantee you that's something Florida State today is talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, that is a con- – they won the game, yes. They outscored, what, 31 nothing after – the, they were down 17 to 14, but there's a concern. And and to, to Chuck's point, I agree with that. Also, coming from uh, Meridian, uh, what young player are you most excited to see the rest of the year? <laughs> oh, there's several of them. But, uh, you know, obviously Perkins, obviously Xavier Harris. I, I, th- I still got my eye on Aiden Williams. I think he's going to be just fine. It's just he's got to learn the little nuances of playing college wide receiver He's getting good tutelage from those older guys, and he'll explode here pretty soon. Uh, I, I think those are probably the three main guys. I think we're going to see a lot of Heath, the tight end now, right? Yeah. We're going to see yeah, a lot a, of that's him. That's a good That's a good. And he pick. looked good. He looked good in what yeah. he was doing, too. That's a good pick, Gary. Yeah, and I think those are the obvious ones. I want to see Tyler Banks and Taylor Groves and some of the guys that – aren't the stars, right, that are kind of coming on slowly behind the scenes. I want to see what some of those guys can do, too. All right, text messages every week brought to you by Cannon Clearing McGraw. CCMOxford.com for your real estate needs. CCMOxford.com. Now to the Rebel Injury Report, brought to you by Oxford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. That is OxfordOrtho.com. Well, there's very few things in, in 40 years of doing this that, has made me sick at my stomach, but I just got sick at my stomach when Hudson Wolf got hurt. Yeah. I mean, that kid has worked so hard to get back from serious back issues for a couple of years, and then now he catches a pass and on the tackle breaks a collarbone. And that's the same thing that Michael Trigg did last year, so we're looking at five to six weeks probably. Uh, but that's just a guess. They don't give injury information out at Ole Miss. We just have to do an educated guess. Sakari Franklin, man, you know, we thought three to four weeks when he first got his knee cleaned up August 1st. Uh, we're going on six weeks this week. So hopefully, well, five weeks actually. Hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll see him. Um, Caden Prescorn's got that broken toe, we understand, and I think he'll be out another week or two. Um, then you got wide receiver Larry Simmons and wide receiver Jeremiah Dillon. I don't know what's wrong with either one of them. I think Simmons has a groin issue and may have to have surgery. If he does, he'll probably be out most of the season. I don't know what's wrong with Dillon, but he's out right now. And that's about it, really. Chuck, what about the uh, two-lane transfer that can oh, run? Oh, Kennedy. Yeah. Um, he hasn't practiced. He hasn't practiced, and I don't know what's wrong with him. He is in a black jersey, which which means he is injured. Um, I know that they've moved him to cornerback because he's fast. He's smaller. He's not. He, he doesn't seem like safety size to me. He's like 5'10", 175 maybe. And they moved him from safety to corner, but he's had practiced any. So yeah. we don't know. I know he's fast. I've seen him run. That's what we need. Yeah. Need to mention the Faris Group also. They're our partner in retirement with nearly two decades of 
expertise. They help retirees invest and distribute those savings. The Farise Group, they have offices in Ridgeland, Oxford, Little Rock, and Baton Rouge. Give them a call. It's toll-free, 1-877-327-3735. All right, let's talk with Harry Harrison on the other side. We'll continue with this version of the Cannon Motors Mississippi Rebel Yell Hotline. You can break them open and they smell like ladies lying in the sun. We've all been there before. A weekend trip to the casino canceled because real life came calling. Well, my bookie's new and improved online casino is here to change the game. Dive into a truly realistic casino experience featuring the latest in slots, progressive jackpots, and live dealer action all from the comfort of your own home. Take advantage of weekly blackjack tournaments and a brand new collection of high-end games for a chance at real cash rewards. The MyBookie Casino provides a Las Vegas experience when the action's in your hands. And the best part is you don't even need to wear pants. Your adventure at the MyBookie Casino begins today with a generous sign-up bonus using promo code TOC for Talk of Champions, TOC. That's promo code TOC to secure yourself a sweet deposit bonus. And that's not all. Because their revamped loyalty program ensures that you'll be showered with rewards, including free spins, cashback offers, and a host of exclusive VIP perks. The more you play, the more you win. Play anytime, anywhere with the MyBookie Casino. And make sure to check out MyBookie for all your gaming needs at www.mybookie.ag. That's www.mybookie.ag. Never miss the game and never miss the party at the Library Sports Bar in Oxford. Grab a seat at a cocktail in the sports bar to watch the game on one of their many big screen TVs. Move on into the middle bar for some great live music Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Enjoy a breeze, a beer, and a ball game out in their patio as well. Stop in for happy hour from 3 to 7 during the weekdays. Have a big old time at the biggest bar in town. Meet you at the Brary, the Library Sports Bar on South 11th in Oxford. Cannon Cleary McGraw is ranked Oxford's number one real estate firm because of fans like you. The agents of Cannon Cleary McGraw are true experts in their field, and it shows with hundreds of five star reviews and unwavering commitment to their clients. Cannon Cleary McGraw experts specialize in game day condos, seasonal townhomes, and high end single family homes. If you are on the sidelines and ready to get in the game, give a Cannon Cleary McGraw agent a call today at 662 371 1000. Tilt the odds in your favor of getting what you want with the best service in Oxford at Cannon Cleary McGraw real estate. Roof leaks can disturb your relaxing weekend or put your business operations and assets in jeopardy. Riverland Roofing is a licensed, insured, and certified roofing contractor that offers clients quality solutions that suit their budget. As a certified GAF master contractor, Riverland can offer warranties that can last a lifetime, servicing five states, including Mississippi and Tennessee. Owned and operated by Ole Miss alumni, Riverland Roofing covers what matters most, home or business. Find out more at RiverlandLLC.com or or call 844-901-ROOF. Make Lenora's in Oxford your go-to dinner play this season. Their daily ravioli is always amazing, and you cannot go wrong with the decadent crawfish mac and cheese. They have an excellent variety of seafood dishes, and their ribeyes and fillets are cooked to perfection every time. Have a taste of the weekend on Wine Wednesdays, too. Call for your reservation today at 662-236-1144. That's 236-1144. Located at 309 North Lamar. Great food and great vibes. It's a winning combination. Hey, cheers, and see you at Lenora's. When you think car, we want you to think Canon. Whether you're in the market for gas, hybrid, or electric vehicles, our team has got you covered. We're invested in your future and in seeing that you have the experience you deserve, even after you get your car. Pre-order or bring home a new Chevrolet Silverado or a Chevrolet pre-owned vehicle from Canon Chevrolet of Oxford today. And remember, when the smoke clears, nobody beats a Canon deal. Nobody. Chevrolet, find your road. Outback Steakhouse knows steak. Even better, the grills are always hot and ready for your favorites. There's nothing better than pairing a bold steak with a blooming onion and one of our signature cocktails. Drop in for a great lunch or dinner anytime for awesome food and a blooming good time. Either way, Outback has your back. Visit their locations in Tupelo, Hattiesburg, Meridian, South Haven, Diaberville, and Flowood, Mississippi. Also serving Jackson and Cordova, Tennessee. Outback Steakhouse. 
Are you looking for a quality used car at a price fit for your budget? No Worries Automotive Group has locations in Batesville, Olive Branch, South Haven, and Memphis. No credit check, no driver's license, no worries. Every vehicle comes with a 30-month, 30,000-mile service contract. Let our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff help you find the car you deserve. Remember, we have locations in Batesville, Olive Branch, South Haven, and Memphis. Find us anytime, anywhere at NoWorriesCars.com. Ole Miss football, basketball, baseball, and more are all right here on the Rebel Yell Hotline, presented by Cannon Motors. Good show so far. Ole Miss and Tulane getting ready to uh, do that little top 25 battle there at Yuleman Stadium. They had 26,000 in attendance in their game against South Alabama. Yeah, and according to their media guide, uh, Gary, first time since 1949 they've been preseason ranked. That is wild. Now our good buddy is on with us. We get him most of these Monday nights, especially through football season. Harry Harrison, welcome back. Gentlemen, how are you tonight? Doing great, my man. Very good, huh? very good. We came through that one Saturday with great weather and a great win, and uh, it's got to be a laugher before it's over with. But uh, uh, I thought we hit on all the cylinders uh, Saturday afternoon and uh, played a lot of people, so they had a lot of film on a lot of different guys to go over the last couple of days. And what what were your impressions as far besides hitting on all cylinders? I agree with you there. Um, My impression, I, Chuck, is Lane Kiffin's got quite an offensive scheme. He just plug guys into it, and they become stars. And I, I think you saw that with Trey Harris. I, you know, they, the defense didn't tackle all count until the last Saturday, and that was against the uh, scout team. So I never saw Trey Harris do much with the ball after he caught it. I knew he ran very, very crisp routes. He caught the ball well in space and, and, and in traffic. But you didn't know what he could do after the catch. And that's what I was impressed by on Saturday is what, you know, yeah. Make that cut, plant that foot, and make guys miss. So I was impressed by that. Or run through them. <laughs> All the above. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I, I I was impressed, even though again it was Mercer, uh, how clean a pocket Dart had. He had the proverbial all day to throw. Yes, he did, and I, and I thought uh, John Garrison, the offensive line coach, did a great job of substituting those interior linemen, so we never. Nobody ever gave out in there. Uh, you know, we continue to talk about Mercer, you know, one F- FCS team, one double A, whatever way you want to describe it. But but they had some athletes. Uh, where I thought it was going to be a big difference for them was when they, we got in the trenches with our guys, and that turned out to be the case. I thought our defensive fronts, both everybody that got in there played very well. And Xavier Harris, of course, had a big day. This was too quick for him inside. And I thought Pete Golden really placed uh, some Tara and Perkins in the right positions so he could go make plays. You know, he, you know, Chuck, he, there's no way he's going to know that defense backwards and forwards yet. But they got him on that outside a lot and let him just go rush the passer, uh, you know, chase the guy down, chase the backs down from, you know, from from, from the backside. And uh, you can't teach speed, and he's got plenty of that. Absolutely. And, you know, and I, I thought that uh, overall the, the defense – I don't know. I, I didn't think they were outstanding, but I thought for a, it was a good start considering how many players they played. Well, I, and I think what you you know you failed to see though, Chuck, it, those corners played a lot of man coverage because we were able to line up seven in the box. We had five across the front and two inside backers, so we had to be playing man in, in, in the secondary. And that might have been what the problem was on the very first play. I, don't, I know the safety blew out of where he was supposed to be. And quarterback went 75 quick yards in their first play, and after that it was downhill all the way for them. But, uh, you know, we're going to see much better offense starting this Saturday with Tulane. Harry, do you think Ole Miss is going to play that five-man front very often? Uh, you know, I think it depends on the opponent. Yancey, I think obviously anybody in the SEC wants to stop run first, make you beat us throwing the football. So I think that was – but I felt like they, they were really confident in our, in our quarters and – and John Saunders covering the slot receiver. Uh, I thought they were. I thought they were real confident in those guys being able to play man. So that that allowed them to pack the box with five across the front, two in, two in the middle, and those linebackers. And that and that shut things down on the run standpoint. But uh, I heard you guys talking about time of possession. 
not that it means much anymore, but uh, they had to play. They had 68 plays. We had 74. The difference was they had 235 total yards. We had 667. <laughs> so uh, right, right. doesn't really mean much to me. You know, uh, talking about the depth chart and, and how many in the box, I thought it was kind of funny today that they put out finally put out a depth chart, and they put out a 3-4. Uh, with, with with Cedric Johnson playing an outside linebacker, and I, I'm thinking to myself, these 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 guys are just playing games with this depth chart, uh, you know, and that's fine. I don't care. Uh, they had the right people listed as starters, obviously, but uh, the, a three four, I don't know. I don't think Cedric Johnson is going to be playing a true outside linebacker. I think he's going to be a walk up backer. <laughs> Chuck, he did drop in coverage a few yeah, times. He did. I watched him and kind of laughed, but because uh, because he, he got downfield and made a tackle on a wide receiver, and I, and I made a comment today to tell him, I said, if you're a 175 slot receiver, the last guy you want to see coming at you is a, a 6'3", 265 pound outside linebacker or defensive end, whatever you want to call it. But he did also play the strong side some, Chuck, and had his hand on the ground. So yep. They moved those guys around. I thought Pete did a really good job moving them around. Uh, once again, it was Mercer, and they were outmatched, certainly along, along the front lines uh, and throughout the game. But uh, I thought they, we did a good job of just seeing what these guys can do, mixing and matching some, some players and mixing, mixing and matching some uh, positions, too, especially Cedric Johnson and Centaria Perkins. Uh, I think they moved him around to get the most out of him. That's, that's what you saw last year with the LSU linebacker named Perkins. It was so good. You just kind of stick him out there and tell him to go get the football. And I think that's probably what we're doing with some Terran Perkins. And he gets what? He does a really good job of going to get the football. Harry, Chuck, uh, Gary, were y'all a little bit surprised at the lack of running game? And, and yes, they were stacking the box. But even last year when they stacked the box against Ole Miss, Ole Miss was able to impose his will on the defenders and run the ball at will. They weren't Saturday. Uh, I, what, what are your observations on that? My observation is, Yancey, it's a long season. The last thing you want to do is get your, your run your running back 25 times in the very first game against the team. It doesn't matter. And so, uh, obviously, we were able to score quickly, score a lot, big play, chunk plays on, on, on the outside, throwing to different receivers, tight ends. And I just didn't, you know, 13 carries is, was more than plenty. We know what the guy's capable of doing. Now, each week, as this thing gets tougher, uh, you got a different scheme against a different team, and uh, you might see the guy run it 25 times this Saturday. But uh, we'll talk about Tulane whenever you guys get ready. But uh, they, they've got a pretty good two, – two inside defensive tackles played very well Saturday night, I thought, for this. Harry, I think our offense is kind of a pick-your-poison. Uh, yeah. I think we can run it, and I think we can throw it. And and you, you if you're a, a defensive coordinator, I think we're kind of a nightmare. I, I don't think it's any doubt, Chuck, and that hadn't just started. That's been just pretty much since Lane Kiffin's been there. I think we've got better players today on that. I think we've got uh, some really good uh, combinations on our offensive line uh, that we've been using, and I think he's going to continue to try to do that. Cause, you know, 12-game season in, in this league, guys, you know how tough it is, and people go down all the time. But uh, I, I just believe that uh, – we are we are we are a offensive juggernaut, and and I, and I don't get me wrong. I know who we're playing Saturday. I know the talent level we we're playing, and we'll have this combination conversation next Monday night. It might be a different conversation, but it, we we hadn't just led the league in rushing for the last two years not to be able to run the football, and we, and we will when that when that time arises. Harry Matty said that they're really the strength on two lane right now. These three wide receivers they have that, as she called it, track speed. In my eyes, I think the biggest weakness defensively for Ole Miss is the overall team speed, especially in the secondary. How do you see that matchup playing out? Well, I, I, I once again, I, I thought they did have some speed on the outside. I didn't get their names nailed down. I was watching it after our game Saturday night, and I thought they did have a couple, of, at least two receivers on the outside that had good speed. But I go back to who was trying to cover them too, Yancey. So I like our corners. <laughs> I think our corners can run. They may be – they may have more team speed than some of the, the uh, safeties do, but I like uh, I like number five uh, Saunders at, uh, at the cover the slot, and I certainly like a two or three, maybe four corners on the outside. So I think we're going to take more and more chances playing man coverage and, lo- and, and and turning guys loose to get to the quarterback. So we'll see. We get burned at time of two Saturday. That that certainly can change, but uh, that, that's the good thing about having that many different players. You can mix and match and do what you need to do with it. 
Now, you said it on the broadcast Saturday as a, as a defensive back yourself, how important that defensive line and getting the pressure on the quarterback was to make your job easier. You don't have to cover so long or as long. And against a veteran quarterback like Pratt, talk about the defensive line for Ole Miss as a whole now and what they have to do on Saturday. Well, it's good, good point. Good point, Gary. Uh, you still got to do that. This guy's a, a veteran. He played against us, what, two years ago up here. Pretty darn good that night. He's got nothing but better since then. I don't think he's the most mobile guy. He's not a shifty guy like some of our guys are, but uh, he, he ran away from, from a lot of pressure Saturday night. And, and, and sometimes he'd throw well on the run. Sometimes he didn't. So I think uh, our game plan is going to try to keep, keep him on the run, try to get pressure up the middle. No quarterback likes pressure coming up the middle. If you're coming from the side, you might be able to step away from that, step up in the pocket or back. But when you got pressure straight up the middle, that doesn't leave you many places to go. So I, I think we'll be bringing a lot of blitzes come Saturday, try to you know get him out of his rhythm. But as he goes, certainly goes two lanes offense. Great point. Anybody that uh, in particular jumped off the page to you that maybe you weren't expecting Saturday? Well, we played so many people, Chuck. Uh, you know, I, I've been I've been seeing this guy all, all year, uh, number thirty five. Uh, a kid from Virginia it's, uh, plays linebacker. Looks so darn good in a uniform. Plays a little bit stiff, but he had a good day that day. You can't be with his name. Reginald Banks. Hughes? No, not – well, Hughes had Banks. a good day, too. This, this, I'm Tyler Banks? Excuse me, Tyler Banks. Tyler Banks, yeah. Yeah, I thought Reginald Hughes did a good job. He's also playing that outside linebacker, DN, whatever you want to call that position. Is that what they call it today, Chuck? Is they it? call it a jack. They call it the jack, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what that's what they've always called it over at Alabama. It's a jack linebacker. Well, you and I both know it's a defensive end. Occasionally, they'll bring a blitz from some other way and, and bring him off in coverage, but that ain't, that's not going to happen often, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, I, I thought uh, Xavier Harris had a good day. Uh, you know, he, he had moments last year, totally different guy this year so far in that game. We'll see as the, as the season winds down. and The competition certainly gets better every, each and every week. But I thought he really had a good did a good job in that second group that came in there. J.J. Begees, you know, he's not uh, going to surprise me. He, he's solid and, and, and obviously learn how to continue to learn how to play that position. Does very well. I thought all of our linebackers certainly moved around well. I uh, thought the first two guys. Uh, and I was looking <laughs> – I'm looking at Monty Montgomery, born in 1998, Chuck. You know how old that makes you? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I thought, that's, that's pretty impressive, guy still playing at 25. I'm not sure how you pull that off, but uh, I'm glad he's on our team. Well, hey, I think I think Ukwu I mean, yeah, is about older than him, isn't he? <laughs> I, I, maybe so, but that, that helps, guys, when you've got those juniors and seniors scattered across there that they had a lot. They've had a lot of snaps in their career. That ought to be in – you're talking about guys that ought to be in their third year in the NFL? Yeah, or at least second. <laughs> <laughs> the transfer portal, guys, it's, it's certainly been a, been a blessing for us. Well, in, in the COVID year, you know, gives everybody an extra year. An so extra year. That's, that's a, a big factor still. Yeah, but he, of course it is, but he had another year somewhere else without it. <laughs> Harry, yeah. You, yeah. you talked about the two defensive tackles for Tulane. They played well. Talk a little bit more about them. And then Matty, uh, you know, really said that those two linebackers that have been multi-year starters for Tulane are kind of the rock of that defense. What, what are we going to see from them defensively? Well, I, I think that's what I think, you know, they're going to try to control. They run the same type of defense. Look like to me, you know, three down linemen and stand up linebacker. We call him a jack, a defensive end, whatever you want to call him. But, I think they want to control our run, Yancey, and uh, I think they're going to bring pressure on, on Dart, whomever's in there, quarterback. So I think you're going to see probably a different game plan. I mean, we just – Dart was just able to sit back there and pick – he went through three and four and five progressions almost every pass play. He, he had so much time to throw. And, and that's what you hope we get into every contest. Uh, so uh, he, he's able to pick out that receiver that, that's running open and not always do you have that time. We didn't last year, but I thought that, that was a really – well, well done on Saturday offensive line. Now we're going to play a much better defensive front come this week. And those two guys, had, those two inside tackles, certainly had a good uh, night Saturday against South Alabama. I think Yancey's going. To, they're going to see a lot better offensive line coming at them come Saturday. So we shall see who wins that war. But that that'll be certainly interesting to look at. And I think they want to bring pressure 
that front four or five and, and then maybe even bring both linebackers occasionally. But, uh, uh, you know, we, you got to run the football enough to be able to keep that from happening. And I think if that's the case, the Rebels will run it well Saturday night. Hey, Harry, appreciate your time, man. But I got to say something now. When you, whenever you get within about 70 miles of Baton Rouge, you, you get a, you get a fever, don't you? I mean, <laughs> I, mean Chuck, I, I don't, I'm I don't not, want you to I'm get not, too close I'm, to LSU. Chuck, I'm not a Florida State fan, but I couldn't pull for LSU and checkers, man. <laughs> I hear you. Me bro. neither. I hear you. So I said I, the same I, but thing. I enjoyed watching the end of that last night. Don't get me wrong. Yes, I did sir. too. I did too. Hey, thank you, Harry. Appreciate All you. All right, brother. guys. Thank you, Harry, as always. Unbelievable. That's a great point he made about pressuring up the middle, right, especially quarterbacks that are not very mobile. You can get away with it on the outside pressure, like Eli used to, right, just make a little nudge, buy you a little time. But when you get that pressure up the middle, it's really not a lot of and, places And that's go. where we struggled a little last year. It is. Pressure right up the middle. It is. Because you had a brand-new center, Caleb yep. Warren. Was had never played center before. Nick Broker had never played guard before. Jeremy James had never played guard before. So your whole middle of your offensive line was was brand new. And, yeah, and that's where people attacked. And I think defensively, Ole Miss is going to get better pressure. I think Zevion Harris is about to have a big year. And you put him with piggies in that middle right there, that could be a lot of problems. And by the way, Yuku will not be 25 until January. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Is that right? Well, I went and looked it up. Yeah. Wow. He does have the bachelor's degree, though, in computer science from 2020. Back in. They got it. Ole Miss got to have one of the oldest defenses in the country, though. <laughs> we'll be back and finish it up. Rebel fans, do you have real estate questions? Coldwell Banker Signature agents have the answers. Whether you're buying or selling, let the agents at Coldwell Banker Signature give you the home field advantage. Start your search now, www.oxford38655.com, or call them directly at 662-50-38655. Also, if you're thinking about a career in real estate, give Martin a call at 662-50-38655 to learn about the opportunities available. Find your home with Coldwell Banker Signature today. Never miss the game and never miss the party at the Library Sports Bar in Oxford. Grab a seat and a cocktail in the sports bar to watch the game on one of their many big screen TVs. Move on into the middle bar for some great live music Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Enjoy a breeze, a beer, and a ball game out in their patio as well. Stop in for happy hour from 3 to 7 during the weekdays. Have a big old time at the biggest bar in town. Meet you at the Brary, the Library Sports Bar on South 11th in Oxford. Are you looking for a quality used car at a price fit for your budget? No Worries Automotive Group has locations in Batesville, Olive Branch, South Haven, and Memphis. No credit check, no driver's license, no worries. Every vehicle comes with a 30-month, 30,000-mile service contract. Let our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff help you find the car you deserve. Remember, we have locations in Batesville, Olive Branch, South Haven, and Memphis. Find us anytime, anywhere at NoWorriesCars.com. Cannon Cleary McGraw is ranked Oxford's number one real estate firm because of fans like you. The agents of Cannon Cleary McGraw are true experts in their field, and it shows with hundreds of five star reviews and unwavering commitment to their clients. Cannon Cleary McGraw experts specialize in game day condos, seasonal townhomes, and high end single family homes. If you are on the sidelines and ready to get in the game, give a Cannon Cleary McGraw agent a call today at 662 371 1000. Tilt the odds in your favor of getting what you want with the best service in Oxford at Cannon Cleary McGraw. Raw real estate. With over 40 years of combined experience, the Tom Smith Land and Homes team, serving the Cleveland, Mississippi area, is committed to achieving the best results for buyers and sellers. Their knowledge and expertise about agricultural, hunting, and recreational lands is highly known and respected throughout the state. With Tom Smith Land and Homes, you can expect more and get more return on your real estate investment. Contact Tom Smith Land and Homes today at 662-441-2500.
Looking for the right place to get your game day colors? Rebel Rags has the largest selection of Ole Miss merchandise anywhere, including football jerseys in every size and color. Come grab them while supplies last. Rebel Rags also has game day polos, sideline gear, tailgate items, and more. Famous name brands like Nike, Under Armour, Columbia, Drake, Coliseum, Champion, and Comfort Color T-shirts. Check out Rebel Rags' new interest off Jackson Avenue with plenty of parking or shop online at rebelrags.net. Rebel Rags, owned and operated by Rebel fans for Rebel fans. Sell them, Molly. Rebel Rags, anything, everything, all. Miss. More of the Rebel Yell Hotline, presented by Cannon Motors, coming up next. Finish things up with a lot of business to do. First of all, SEC and Ole Miss News brought to you by Van Atkins Jewelers. They're the South's leader in the state. Jewelry and diamond solitaires, as Chuck says, you know she's worth it. First of all, senior wide receiver Jordan Watkins was named SEC Co-Special Teams Player of the Week. Conference did that this afternoon. He returned his first career punt. For a touchdown, 70-yard score in the third quarter. First punt for Ole Miss since 2013. Jeff Scott did it against Texas, 73 yards. In all, Watkins had 180 all-purpose yards on the day. Six catches, 111 more. I think that's kind of sad. <laughs> in return to punt in 10 yards, in 10 <laughs> years. Is. I mean, I'm sorry, but I mean, ugh, it is. let's hope you don't go another 10. And in another uh, <laughs> bit of info, Former Ole Miss and NFL quarterback Chad Kelly, now the starter for the Toronto Argonauts. Three-year contract extension. He's the highest-paid quarterback in the CFL. The contract's somewhere around three years for $1.865 million. Good for him. Yep. Good for really him. good for him. All right, now let's get into a little bit of the recruiting news. It's brought to you by our people at the Grove Collective. Their mission is to create that NIL opportunity for Ole Miss student-athletes at the flagship Talk about it, Mr. Yancey. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a really good unofficial visit list. Uh, Tupelo, I don't know if anybody uh, here watched Tupelo play last season. I certainly did. Several games, their defense was unbelievable. They had a trio of prospects, including uh, Ole Miss uh, DB commit Shamar Darden. They also brought in uh, 2026 defensive lineman uh, Jacoy uh, McCoy. He is a beast down low. Had a good chance to watch him some last year. And then their linebacker, uh, Tristan Jernigan, that's committed to A&M. All three of those guys were in town. Caleb Cunningham, uh, the first five-star receiver to come out of Mississippi in many years, even over A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf. He was in from Choctaw County, 2025 player. Um, Kim Franklin and his teammate, uh, Ja'Cory Hobson out of Lake Cormont. Ja'Cory is a four-star linebacker. Um, he was in a lot of these guys in the 25, 26 classes, right? Uh, then they also had in, you know, most all of their commits in, including Cam Franklin that we just mentioned, Cam Beavers, uh, William Eccles, all defensive linemen there, Cameron Clark, uh, defensive end out of Tennessee, Patrick Broomfield, a corner out of Clarksdale, Bernard Cossey out of New Orleans, and Shamar Darden, as we just mentioned before, out of Tupelo. So a lot of in-state prospects were able to make the game. As far as just regular tidbits, uh, Zach Berry for the Ole Miss Spirit there with Chucky uh, reported that East Robertson, Tennessee, Kentucky, four-star linebacker commit Elijah Groves is a name to watch. He's the younger brother of Ole Miss freshman Taylor Groves, who I've been really high on him. So kind of keep an eye on that. And just the the craziness of recruiting now in the portal air. <laughs> Recently, Ole Miss commit just committed last week. Noel Wright, uh, where was he? Not at Ole Miss, but he visited Mississippi State this past weekend. So uh, <laughs> oh, who knows? I don't know. But that's it on the on – Oh, no, we're okay with him. Yeah, I know. But it's just silly, the whole thing. I'm glad I'm out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's brought to you by our buddies at Big Delta Power Sports 155 Cracker Barrel Drive in Batesville. Well, what can one say that hadn't been already been said about a 73-7 to win over Mercer to lift off the 2023 Ole Miss football season? It was all good from the Rebels' perspective. They basically did what they wanted to do when they wanted to do it. Quarterback Jackson Dart, wide receiver Trey Harris, wide receiver Jordan Watkins, the offensive line, the total defensive effort, it was all good. Two time, uh, two all time Rebel records were set with Harris catching four TD passes in a single game and the Rebs throwing for a school record 524 yards through three quarterbacks, including Spencer Sanders, Dart, and, uh, Whit Walker Howard. The student turnout was awesome. Here, here. Juice Kiffin retrieving the <laughs> kicking tee after one of the kickoffs was cool, and the weather was even bearable as the temperatures dipped down into chilly 80s after over a month of brutal heat in this area. 
the bad, well, it makes me sick whenever any Rebel's injured, but multiply that by 100 when I saw tight end Hudson Wolf go down hmm. with what has been reported as a broken collarbone. With all that kid has done to come back from chronic back issues for a couple of years to getting hurt on his first game back just makes my stomach turn for him. I hope he has a speedy recovery. A good kid, good player. Thought he made a really nice catch on the on the great catch. on the play he got hurt on. No ugly. It's all that's all good. Two thirty on Saturday, Yulman in New Orleans. Wear your red if you're going. It's going to be warm, mid nineties. Okay, <laughs> mid nineties. And if you're not going, uh, radio network. I'll start a pregame show at about twelve thirty, and it's going to be televised on ESPN too. There we go. All right, we're going to wear them down. I think in what's the, what's what's score, Chucky? Ah, uh, forty-two twenty-four, something like that. So they cover. Yeah, all we'll, the bad we'll, people out there. Yeah, we're going easy. Cover. We're going to cover. Yeah. What is it? Three and a half. Yeah. Is that what it came out today? Up, it up, moved up to up, seven. Right. It, seven. It's moving up, and yeah. Ole Miss is, you know, way. I guess you would, you know, you know, they could surprise me. I, obviously, any team can. But um, I, I, I watch some of their game and. They're a good team, but I just think this this old Miss team against that type of play uh, team is is going to be too tough to stop. To me, I watched it too. The team speed that I know we've talked about, South Al looked slow to me. They yep. didn't look mm-hmm. fast to me, and I think Ole Miss speed and depth will wear them down by the too. end too. Yeah, they too. I love the Rebels too, and Alabama at minus seven against Texas for all you. <laughs> Gamblers out there, take Ole Miss and Alabama on a poor life. Thanks to Rhino back in the studio and all you good people for being with us next week. Howdy toddy.